I want to just uh, do one or two reminders and uh, to talk to you a little bit about the expectations for um, your presentation. Thank you for dropping your PowerPoint because we will review those um, PowerPoints as we look. Now, I don't want this to be a focus on what grade I get. I, I want you to see this, or I would prefer that you see this as an outline for your final paper, where you are actually um, utilizing the skills you would have gained um, from, say, Rob Martin's presentation, where you're able to own and to deliver this calling, this vision, and the plan to implement it in a precise, concise way. That is, the vision is understood and shared clearly. So you will make your presentation, which I implore you to ensure, I hope you would have rehearsed and timed it so that it is not exceeding the time that you're given to deliver it. And if there be the need for clarification, we will ask question of you, we will comment so that you are able to do what you would have done in your groups already, present, refine, clarify, ensure that you are communicating this vision, this call, and you are thinking through your plan, your implementation plan, in a way that makes sense. For some of us, we have not seen clearly what the vision is just yet, and we may also not be sure and have precise steps in our implementation, but we are in preparation. And whatever you are, it is legitimate. Wherever you are, it is legitimate. And in your presentation, I invite you to just relax and do that. Now, how are we going to do this? One, um, I would ask you to look to the bottom of your screen. If you over your cursor over the bottom of this screen, you will see a share screen. When you click on that, it will take you to your desktop or to your programs where you can pick your PowerPoint up and you will share that with us. Because once you click on your PowerPoint, we will be seeing it. We will tell you when we're seeing it. So make sure your PowerPoint is ready here and available to be clicked on and then what once you do that, you will move it along, speak to us. We will notify you. Sometimes when you're showing your PowerPoint, you are not seeing yourself, but we're seeing the actual PowerPoint on the screen and we're hearing you. So I invite you to relax. Have your um, PowerPoint ready and let us just go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you because you woke us up and you placed us at a place of thanksgiving and you have brought us together to share the insights that you've given us over the last couple of weeks. We thank you that You've chosen us, and for each of us, you have a plan. A plan for us to prosper. A plan for us to be used of you. A plan for us to show forth your love in unique ways. We pray for every student of BGU 
And in particular, we pray for our presenters this morning, that this, in spite of its academic purpose, your Holy Spirit will be a true guide. And they will go beyond all fears and be welcomed by you as they willingly commit to your call. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Alrighty. So here we are. Dr. Hurt is there with us today as well. Welcome, Dr. Hurt. It's all over to who would like to begin the presentation first. Don't all say me at once. I don't, I don't mind going first if that's helpful. Thank you, Anthony. Um, so as I say, just go to share screen. I will tell you when you are on. Wonderful. We're seeing your PowerPoint and we're ready to hear from you as soon as you're, begin you're ready to begin. Okay, thank you. Mine is one of those presentations I believe that would be still in process, but at this point in time, I've titled my project On Second Thought, or perhaps Think Again. And it is a reflection of my journey, particularly through this course, from a child who loved to play to an adult who thought God was calling him to pastor, to the transition I made to be a planner in the healthcare consultancy world, to what I would presently term my place as a composer of sorts, a person who gathers questions, words, ideas, and images to show truth in a new and different light. So I'm still in process, but I believe that this course has been extremely helpful in moving me down the path. In my reading, there have been four or five key things that have stuck with me. Uh, all of it's been good, all of it's been helpful, but Hendrick's definition of giftedness as being how you do whatever you do uh, has been extremely directional in my life because I've for years tried to focus on that one thing I'm good at and one thing I'm called to do. And perhaps it's more than that. It's an approach to uh, wherever God has placed me, not simply that one thing. Uh, Crouch's reading on culture and how to create new culture um, and the fact that some artifacts render the past really inaccessible was a statement that hung with me through his book. And, and I think gives me some uh, direction looking forward. Uh, Jenkins' book was both good and painful. Um, I found his reading difficult. I found uh, his movement back and forth across the globe to be challenging to keep up with. But there is great hope in the book, this idea that our faith in the year 2050 will be very global, will still be historically rooted, will be increasingly Southern, and will be facing historic opportunities I think delivers hope for all of us who are pursuing God's call. And then two books by Goss in, uh, Oz Guinness, one on calling and his definition that calling is the all-absorbing call of God to himself that is infused into everything we are and do. Um, it, it's really a, a, a helpful definition of what God is up to in my life, uh, bringing me in all that I am into all that he is, and then sending me back out with that infused into everything I do. And then um, some stories from um, a book called Character Counts, and particularly the life of William Wilberforce, and this idea that uh, through 43 years of effort, he eradicated the slave trade in the British Empire. And this idea, idea that's associated with that, that you can change the world, uh, but not alone. So there's this idea that uh, wherever you are in the journey, wherever I am in the journey, you can be a world changer, but you do need community. As I indicated, my calling is, I think, in process, um, still under refinement. 
particularly in working with my PLC, telling stories, listening to their feedback. There are a lot of words that emerged, uh, creating, moving, competitive, improving, shaping. I'm a gatherer, I'm an assembler, I'm a writer, I'm a performer, I'm a proposer. Uh, there were some sticky thoughts from the BGU community, I thought that were very helpful. Uh, some encouragement along the way, ideas that I'm already pursuing, already reflecting this kind of calling in my conversations in the posts. I did participate again in the Myers-Briggs inventory. I had done that previously. I looked again at the DISC inventory and uh, looked some at the Enneagram approach to uh, character and personality and found each of those helpful. Didn't, found them life, didn't find them life-changing, but each of them seemed to confirm what I was hearing from my PLC. And then also thinking back on past projects I'd been involved in, wounds I'd received through life, redirects, in other words, I'd planned to go north, but God actually took me south, um, questions that have emerged along the way. Really just earlier this week, I, I, I landed upon this term composer, and I know it's easiest to think about that in the sense of a musical uh, person, but I, I'm thinking about it as it relates to me in the broader sense, as a person who gathers things together and creates something new out of them. They may be existing ideas or thoughts from other people, but I bring them together in such a way that allows the listener and me to some extent to reflect again on something that I was already familiar with that causes me to examine it and hopefully the listener to examine it from a different perspective. <clears throat> As I think about the path forward and the communication effort, there certainly is some assembly required in what's ahead of me. But I think of five things, four of which are fairly firm in my mind. First of all, a beginning to develop skills and expertise through association with, with, uh, with good mentors, speakers, writers, other composers. I think I need to dive deeper into the world that's out there and those people that are doing what I think I do very well. Second, the improvement or betterment of my voice my hand, my eye, if you will, and the way I proceed with analysis. I, I, I would like to think of the thesis I will be involved in perhaps a year from now as more than something that's merely academic. I would like for that to be evolved, if possible, into a book that has relevance and influences daily living. I envision a blog emerging I did some blogging a few years ago, but I, I really lacked the direction that I think is important that needs to be uh, visible to the viewer in the effort. So I'm hoping that that becomes something that calls me to lean into the daily conversations of cultures that I'm immersed in. I don't know if where I'm heading is toward a business or a nonprofit. I think that's very much yet to be determined. I may continue to serve in the um, consultancy that I'm involved with and the church that I'm involved with, but it could emerge into something else. My current ministry is uh, eclectic, synthetic. Um, it's a gathering sort of effort. I, I think there are three particular tasks that are in front of me right now. One is to influence the culture of healthcare, uh, re-examine particularly with Native Americans and how healthcare is delivered to them, how spirit can and should drive their healthcare delivery. Uh, that is a word that occurs at the very end of Indian Health Services mission. And I wonder what would happen if that word was first rather than last, how that might transform the delivery of healthcare to Native Americans. Second, I see a calling to influence the culture where I work to re-examine how the culture at my existing firm can be enriched, deepened, and strengthened. And as I've reflected over time at the efforts of Dennis Bakke and Joy at Work, I think my push on um, revealing values at our firm can be helpful to where we are heading in the future as a firm. And then third, a call to influence the culture of my church to re-examine the potential future of ministry and organizational health at, at the church that I serve. This will require relationships. I think uh, certainly using my BGU experience as an opportunity to increase my my global perspective to uh, broaden and deepen my knowledge base. 
um, and understand what new relationships I need to invest in. I, I think some of those are still not clear. Some of them are coming to the surface, but all of this to position myself as a capable cultural change agent and ultimately to refine my focus, to narrow it on what culture I want to transform. I, there are three that I'm speaking of presently. I may really lock into one of those or may discover another one in the balance of my education that becomes the center of my focus. Spiritual formation, this has perhaps been, in a strange way, the hardest part of this effort. Again, listening to my peers from posts and group conversations, there's a lot of wealth there for me to reflect on. Uh, part of it involves, part of the formation process moving forward, I think means finishing a disengagement from my family narrative. My family of origin was great. There were a lot of good things there, but there was some pain there, um, especially in my relationship with my dad, in my relationship with my calling as I thought I originally understood it a calling deeply connected with Canada where I no longer live. And at this point, I'm not certain that I will ever be back there. But this idea that Brad Smith introduced of uh, not wasting a good sin, but in the middle of that focusing on God's acceptance has really been a thought I've been increasingly wrapping my mind around and trying to rest in the simple, profound acceptance of God. My academic path moving forward, I've tried to represent visually like this, uh, I've completed the community um, asset-based community development and appreciative inquiry course, also theology of work. I'm presently involved in the personal assessment. My next course I plan to take is uh, Healing Cities Through the Arts. For me, these represent a new perspective on community and work and beauty and the impact that those can have on cultural transformation. But I see all of those um, working through the filter that this course provides leading me to broadening my experience and my perspective through an overture immersion, which I've not done yet. I, I think I'm heading into Baki a little backwards. My immersion is coming near the end rather than the beginning. But hopefully that results in a refined thesis proposal that then emerges out the other end of this process as, uh, <clears throat> as a meaningful contribution uh, to the conversation. I see right now my effort as one of enlarging my perspective, knowledge, and capacities to compose ideas, data, and images that influence people toward redemption and the kingdom. That underlying portion of the sentence, if I had to, if I had to, if I had to answer the question, what's your mission right now? What's your calling? I think that would be it. God has gifted me to compose ideas, data, and images that influence people toward redemption and the kingdom. And the redemption aspect of that is important because our world is broken. And oftentimes helping people to do exactly the right thing is, is hard. Um, moving them forward is stepped is perhaps the first effort. So I've represented my, my project this morning, not just orally, but graphically, because I think that that's part of who I am and what I do. And I don't know if you noticed, but the image on the right slowly came into focus through each of the slides. And it is an image that communicates words, uh, wood, textures, and mystery. And all of those are important to me. So thank you for the opportunity to share. And hopefully you heard all that. Uh, and I'm open for questions uh, or direction. Thank you very much. Wow. Well, thank you, Anthony. You opened and you set the bar, so I, I'm going to be silent for a moment. Keep your PowerPoint handy. Don't take it away just yet. But I'm opening up for us to briefly comment on Anthony's um, PowerPoint presentation, not on so much his PowerPoint, but on the presentation of his vision and thoughts to us this morning. I'm going to ask Dr. Hurt to do the opening review or comment, commendations, and then the rest of us present could, could also participate to Anthony, whether through um, the chat or if you want to do so directly. Over to you, Dr. Hurt. 
Anthony, um, <clears throat> that was uh, that was very interesting. Um, now, one thing that I noticed was you're calling yourself a composer. Uh, when you when that word came to mind, because it, it looked like you had a lot of different uh, ideas there about your role, and it it looked like uh, you. Know, what was your uh, thinking when you came across the word composer? Um, you know, how did you how did you feel about finding that word? Well, that's a great question. Um, truth to tell, it 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 felt like a word that fell on me early this week, and I I I spoke with my wife, of course, who knows me well, and I and I asked her, "What do you think of this word to describe?" how I approach whatever I do. Um, she, th she thought it was a helpful term. I struggle with the word in the sense that it wants to be, it wants to conform initially to musical analysis or musical composition. But as I, as I allow it to breathe, and present a little broader definition. Um, a, a musical composer does not so much invent new notes. A musical composer just restructures notes. The composer says, I have a palette of notes here that I've collected, and I want to show you how to think about these notes in a new way. Um, I have other things in my palette. I have um, an orchestra or a band or an ensemble or a vocalist. I can be very simple. I can be very complex. Um, but ultimately, I want to move you. I want to stir you. I want to send you away from a performance, from an encounter that causes you to um, think and um, treasure the experiences. I, I like the word in the sense that it allows me to be an introvert when I need to be, and it pushes me to be an extrovert when I need to be. Much of a composer's work is done solo, but there is this very public event, this performance, this story that has to be told um, that the composer absolutely has to lean into, and then a composer has to take responsibility for their work. Uh, it cannot be shoddy. It cannot be. Um, it cannot be poorly assembled, or it will never make it to market, if you will. So, I, I like the idea because it allows me to be very eclectic, which is who I am. At the same time, I think it gives uh, structure to the kinds of things that I like to do, and the way I like to pull, whether it's ideas or questions or people or thoughts together to create some kind of composition. And that could be a presentation, it could be an article, it could be um, quite simply um, a thought. So uh, I, that's my best response at uh, <clears throat> 6.30 this morning. When, when you came across that word, did you, to what extent did you consider that a breakthrough moment uh, in defining your calling? Oh, I, I thought it was very much a breakthrough. I, I've, I've struggled. You know, I, I said at the outset, I, I've been looking for this one thing. And, and Hendrix is really helpful, I think, in allowing that word to drop from wherever it came from. Because as I've mulled over the word and played with it through the week, I, I've thought to myself, well, that explains a lot. Um, I've thought of other examples in my life, things I could have composed into a story to tell my PLC, but the word fits. The more I think about what I do and the way I do what I do, the word fits. And I'm not suggesting that it's the final word, but I think it's a good and functional word to help me forward at this point. Good, okay. Turn it over to the class. I want to comment on Anthony's presentation. I really loved it. 
Uh, but I want to uh, comment on the chapter about communication. That chapter, the, you mentioned five Bs, and that chapter that you, your creativity to develop those five Bs really shows that you're a composer, that, that evidences your creativity, uh, your ability to put things together, and I really like that. And I encourage you to really write that book that you're planning to do in the future and don't wait too much because people really need to hear your message. People need to, to know what, people need to see and to listen and to read through your composition. Thank you very much. Does anyone else want to comment? Um, Anthony, um, from, from, from the use of the word composer, I, and what I've been reading in terms of your um, presentations and the discussions, I, I get a sense that, that, that you want to put things together. Um, and I think that is in keeping with the whole concept of composer, putting pieces together so that you could have some kind of uniformity and movement in a kind of um, cohesive fashion. And I, um, I, I, I'm, I'm really happy um, with, 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 with your, um, the thought in, in going forward. And uh, I, I don't know if you've read um, Corbett and Ficker. Um, that book when helping hurts um, because even as you consider putting pieces together and you know people together based upon their brokenness you might want to consider the whole concept of uh, the relationship with God relationship with self relationship with community and relationship with the environment I think those are critical pieces that need to gel together, um, you know, even as we, even as you attempt to, to be that composer, um, consideration should be given to people in relation to themselves, in relation to their God, in relation to the community, that's the people around them, and of course, in relation to the environment. So, very good. Thank you, Marcel, and I, I really appreciated getting to know you. I, we spent some time talking in our group, um, swapping stories. Um, and I've appreciated your counsel along the way. Very helpful. Thank you. Okay, I know we have to move on. And if there are more comments, I invite you to uh, drop them in the chat so that we assign the time rightfully. But um, Anthony, uh, it's interesting that Dr. Hurt started out on the whole thing of composing. Most of your comments have pointed to composing. And the first thing I, I, I wrote down um, as I took notes from your presentation was the question, what have you learned from composing? And um, I am uh, being the composer and I don't want you to answer that question. But I think somewhere the Holy Spirit is affirming for you, and I hope you feel it, that yours is a call um, to demonstrate to your audience a unique view of your God and how he can work through you for community. And I am really, 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 really happy that you have managed to, 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 to glean that insight. I want to commend your giftedness, the, the way you speak through images. And as you have actually acknowledged the graphics, it is still the way the story is told by the graphic. And a simple one that really impacted me, and I should say two, one way. And so in spite of the dissonance, 
I think you understand clearly that one street on which you are walking. And I'm praying you that focus that always you would have already identified. It could be a crossroads, mm -hmm. but it's one way. And you must have chosen that as against the other. The other thing is I've been using plastic close pegs and the sun crystallizes them and they are so not good. And I'm just looking at your image and I saw those wooden close pegs and I saw the strength and the security with which you've hung the template of your life. And I pray you discernment. That's my prayer for you. Thank you. That you will discern. And as you discern, you will feel the fulfillment of God moving through you. Thank you for a presentation that was not just deep, but, but really exciting and interesting to watch. Thank you. All righty. Now let's move on. Um, who will be next? Um, I'll be next. Okay, Damaris. You will go to share screen by just hovering your, your, your cursor to the bottom of the Zoom screen. And then you will select your... Right, you've done beautiful. Thank you. All right. The title of my presentation is Putting the Pieces Together, My Journey into the Discovery of... Demaris, I could, I could hardly hear you. Okay. Let me get closer. Do you hear me better now? Yes, yes I can. Okay. Yes, my title is Putting the Pieces Together, My Journey into to the discovery of my calling and life vision. And I really like making puzzles. I like creating, I like preparing, I like new beginnings. So I decided to use the theme of puzzle pieces for my presentation and for my project. And this journey of personal assessment has been a real puzzle for me. So this final project intends to put the pieces together as much as I can. So the next puzzle piece is my calling and life vision. And in this chapter, in chapter two, I would like to write about the process of discerning my calling and the influence of my hard times, my high times, my heritage, my heroes, and the hand of God events, and how that they have worked together to help me understand where my calling comes from. I want to include an insight from J.R. Clinton on God's processing time. And although uh, we are doing the, the book reports on chapter one, there are some instances in my project where the author's insights add to what I'm writing. So you will see this on, on different chapters of, of my project. I also want to write about my strengths, my limits, my weaknesses, my hardships, and my opportunities, and also the process of discovering my giftedness, the outcomes that I got from my life map and storytelling experiences, how I rediscover my giftedness, and I want to include an insight from Hendrix on my giftedness, what did I discover uh, from Hendrick's teachings that was really valuable to me. And I also want to write about my calling as a transformational leadership 
a new meaning of culture. Uh, this was really one of the highlights during the class for me. Reading the book Culture Making gave me a new meaning about culture and I want to expand about this in this chapter. And I also want to write about my calling and vision for Latin America. Uh, I want to to just to, to write about the big picture here, the problems, the, the opportunities, my calling to work on, on poverty alleviation, to bring communities and families out of the poverty line. Good morning, everybody. Come to and also my desire to help people in their quality of life. Can I keep going? Are you listening? Okay, sorry about that. There is someone whose mic is not muted. Can I ask all of us to mute our mics if we're not speaking? that way or let me just look to see who it is i may have to mute you myself damaris at this point you and i are the only person who are not muted and i'll go back to muting but please make sure to mute your mic so that whatever is happening in your background is not affecting the presentation thank you okay great thank you and in this part i also want to include an insight from Jenkins, this was also very valuable, what I read from Jenkins about Latin America. So I want to touch base a little bit on, on uh, his insight about the future of the Latin American region. My next puzzle piece is communication. And in chapter three, I want to uh, touch base on, on some things that I've uh, been doing and I will continue to do in the next three years. This, is, this part is not new, it's just a continuation. Uh, I want to write about my current sphere of influence, influence for the Spanish-speaking nations, for churches and leaders. I want to write about my plans to communicate my message and especially about my, my plan to write a uh, maybe a book or articles or some teachings about my transition from pastoral ministry to marketplace ministry and also my plans to continue to be a voice in the marketplace using my prophetic gift to encourage people in business and government. Then I go to my next puzzle piece that is my current ministry and Actually, in the next two to three years, I plan on being a student. I want to complete my DTL. I actually love to study. I love to read. I love to learn. So I think, I believe that God is calling me to, to study during this, this next couple of years. So that's what I, that I'm planning to do. And as I study, I want to focus on poverty, explaining the problem, and possible strategies for poverty alleviation. I want in the next three years to be able to, to conduct an analysis on poverty in Latin America, what has been done, what are possible solutions. And I also want to write in this chapter about my plans to study uh, microfinance as a tool for transformation. There were actually questions and issues that came up uh, from the micro finance aspect of my vision and I plan to provide a discussion about these aspects also about different models of microfinance what works what does not work and at the end this this material this what I'm talking about will be the basically going to be the topic for for my dissertation so I want to to study all of this and finally in this chapter I want to talk about my macro versus micro perspective and my inclination for the macro plans and seeing the big 
picture, picture rather than the microplans. This was actually one of my discoveries and another highlight in this process of assessment. So I want to analyze here how I plan to manage this, my inclination uh, as I move forward. I need to keep in mind this because I, I have been going from the bottom up when I should maintain a focus from macro to micro because this is what really works for me. And this is all connected to visioning versus implementation and visionary leadership and planning. I actually recognize my limits in this area. I don't like working with numbers. I don't like working with money. I don't like working with technical things or the operations of an organization, but I love to oversee and I love to be a visionary so that uh, affects uh, my ministry and the way I do ministry. So I think this is important to add in this chapter. My next puzzle piece is my relationships and this is a more, this is a more relaxing topic for me. In this chapter five, I want to write about my personal learning community, experiencing community, assessment versus discovery, how my PLC has helped me in this process of discovery and how I will continue to listen to their wisdom and guidance. I also want to write about my family in this chapter and especially about the I versus we dilemma. And this is very important for me because I've been dedicated to my children and to my husband for many years and I tend to always use the term we in terms in, instead of, of I. And this class, uh, this assessment has pushed me to look at myself and to talk of, on terms of, of first person. So uh, this is a, an important point for me. I also want to write about my teamwork with Miguel. Miguel is, is my husband and uh, Miguel and I have a shared vision and we have set up the, ste the steps to follow together and we work together. So it is important for us to figure out the areas of compatibility where, where our gifts overlap so we can be effective in what we do together. So this is important for me. And I want to add some insights from Hendrix and Crouch on relationships. And finally, in this chapter, I want to write about my connections in the Dallas area and my connections in Latin America and how I plan to, how I intend to, to use these relationships as I move forward. The next puzzle piece is my spiritual formation. And in chapter six, I want to write about my journey into spiritual growth. I want to expand on growing through trials. I want to include an insight from Henry Nowen on spiritual life. And I want to talk about less, my lessons from my own whole time, my comeback, my detailed beginnings, and how all of this have worked towards my spiritual formation. I also want to write about my ministry out of the church as a priority for spiritual formation and my finding a church opportunity. And this is actually an issue for me right now, but for this project, I want to, to see uh, this as an opportunity and not as an issue. And finally, my final puzzle piece is my academic plan. In chapter seven, I want to talk about, to write about the courses I plan to take, the electives, the independent studies, the overture, the dissertation. I want to write on the importance of the insight from mentors. And I'm living in the Dallas area right now, so I plan to take advantage of my closeness to the BGU community in Dallas uh, for the next, as, at least for the time that I'm that I'm living here and I also want to I plan 
to get an expertise on microfinance models and possible teaching and, and coaching opportunities for the future. And this is part of, of my academic plan. And I, when I talk about this, I don't only think about doing research or reading and studying the topic, but I actually uh, want to do uh, work on the field. I like to go to the places, I like to see the models, I like to see how, how they are working, and I, I have plans to, to go to Guatemala and even Manila next, next spring because I want to take this very seriously, and at the end of all this process, I will really have the expertise to be able to teach or coach others in this topic. And by the end of my project, the pieces of the puzzle should be together and I want to conclude my project by celebrating what I have accomplished up to this moment and also celebrating the doors of new beginnings that God has opened for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Damaris. Thank you. Um, a colorful puzzle, a beautiful puzzle. Dr. Hurt? And Simon will present next. Um, I Come see on, you. That was, uh, yeah, that was very interesting. Um, I, I really liked uh, the connection. Uh, well, what caught my attention was a connection between calling <clears throat> and the very specific and hard-headed uh, field of microfinance, going from the uh, conceptual to the practical. What uh, what kinds of things had you experienced that uh, that caused you to to focus on poverty and microfinance? Um, you you might have mentioned some, but what you, what what might have stood out in particular that that drove your your attention to those areas because those, those do seem very specific. I I was born and raised in Puerto Rico, and I had, as a child, I had the opportunity to, to go to other countries and, and to see, to experience, uh, to see people living in poverty, and that created an, a passion and an interest for me to provide a solution for that. So when I got to, to study, uh, to begin my graduate studies and to do a master's degree, I focused specifically on, on the studies of poverty and the, poverty, uh, the studies of Latin America, so how, how poverty is seen and, and the level, level of, of people, the high level of people living under the poverty line in the Latin American region that surprised me, that impressed me. And I cannot just look at, the, at that, that issue, at that problem and not do anything. I know that I won't, I, won't be the, the, I, I won't bring the only solution, but at least I need to do something. So that's why I feel uh, inclined to this. I feel that, that God is calling me to do something. And because uh, I have been involved in, in well, in marketplace and I have met so many connections during the past 10 years, I, I know God has placed me in a position where, I, where I'm connected and where I can actually make something happen. So I think that I have a responsibility. Thank you. Yeah, the, the, uh, the notion of microfinance, that, uh, that makes me, that's along the lines of, uh, of advice that I've given students as they're as they're developing their projects, and that and that is um, start to start to zero in on on something that's very specific. Uh, so so uh, you know you you want to do something about poverty, so then start zeroing in on on something very specific because um, since since this is a project that you're working on. Um, it has to be something that's within your scope of resources and capabilities. 
um, and, uh, and and so you 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 want to zero in on 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 the on the very focused uh, problem and uh, and and your solution. So it, it sounds like by by uh, bringing up microfinance, it sounds like you are you are well on the way towards uh, defining uh, something very specific. <clears throat> I hope so. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hurd. Um, does any of uh, Demaris's colleagues want to um, comment before I close on Demaris and we move on? Um, I, I just would like to say that um, I, I was indeed, um, I enjoyed the presentation. I enjoyed the puzzle, um, putting things together. And um, I think it was kind of um, creative. And every time I listen to Demaris, uh, um, a line comes back to me always um, from Rock and Van Dyke. Uh, when it comes to grace, geography matters. And the good news means to reach people, reach and preach to people in hard places. And to know that you've already well, positioned, set in a way, but you're thinking about those who are experiencing difficulties, I think, um, I think that is commendable. And uh, um, in relation to what Dr. Hurt made mention of, that was going through my mind. Because um, in terms of you, um, Latin America is a very, it's a vast place. And so um, to make the impact that you might want to make um, in Latin America, I think that will take some getting. And so it, it might be a good thing for you to look at, you know, people in positions that you could probably mobilize and, and to deal with. Or maybe you, 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 you develop a plan where you take a community in Latin America or, or a country, but it's, it's a very large place. And I think, um, I think what Dr. Wirt was suggesting is that, um, I think you mentioned using the resources and so on that you have, and you're a single person. So, um, you might want to look at how you could narrow um, the focus for maximum impact. But I think it was a beautiful presentation. And I always like to know when people are well set, they're thinking about those who are not well set. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcel. I wanted to just uh, say you have, I think, a very effective tool in your toolbox that has nothing to do with microfinance, but I think has everything to do with people in poverty. It's this image that you've presented more than once of being on hold. I, I think that has legs. Um, that has a lot of stickiness to it because all of us feel like at times we've been on hold and God's forgotten us. And as I listen to you talk about Latin America, your love for those people. I would think many in poverty could ask you, what's God got to do with this? I think he's quite forgotten my address. Uh, perhaps the same complaint that the children of Israel had after being in slavery for hundreds of years. So I, I, in listening to your story over the weeks and this, this phase of being on hold, I just want to encourage you to continue to keep that idea front and center uh, in your work, the, the, the things that you've learned from that. It, I, it spoke to me. Um, I immediately thought of times I think God's put me on hold um, and the good things that have come out of that. So I, it's, a very, it's a very potent metaphor and I want to encourage you to continue to use it in your work. Thank you. Good, good presentation too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good morning. I um, just want to say that um, I enjoyed the presentation. I joined it a little bit late because I just arrived in Queens and not in Guyana. And um, I rushed to connect. And uh, I think that uh, Demaris has has spoken to some of the things that I myself has in my, have in my head to try to reach that population that um, 
that may consider themselves marginalized. And um, I, I think uh, uh, we are called to do that, to, to go into those places and to, and to make a difference, to, to change um, things, not by ourselves, but by um, allowing God to, to, to help us to, to penetrate the hearts and to make those changes. I, I want to say it, it's a, a presentation is a very good one. And um, I want to thank her for continuously holding on to what she believes in. I think um, whatever we believe in, and once we can utilize all of the necessary tools before us, we will be able to achieve. And so um, we are all in that part trying to achieve something that God has laid in our heart. So thank you very much, my dear. Thank you, Noel. I'm happy you made it. Um, for the rest of us who may want to say something to Damaris, then please do so by um, sharing in the chat. Uh, Damaris, I've had the privilege of sitting in your PLC meeting, and so I come to the presentation with a little more detail than um, the rest of us who are listening do have. And um, there's some things that stood out for me. It was your acknowledgement of your gifting and how it is manifested. And so it is important that I saw you working from macro to micro. Mm -hmm. And you understand the importance then of the vision, communicating the vision, and having the right persons aligning with that vision. And my prayer for you is that through the Holy Spirit, God will make those things possible. Another thing I wanted to say to you is the course cause collaboration, which is offered by BGU. I would invite you to sit in on that course, primarily because here you get a window into um, researching for that matter, because you are a researcher. Those who are already doing macrofinancing, and in particular, when we approach a research, not to confirm our deep beliefs, but to see the counter arguments I have found from my own experience in, in researching that it was more important for me to find out about those things that were counter to what I'm thinking because it helped me to open my awareness to the challenges of my own ideas, all right? And so you don't go into your research to change your mind, but you actually go in to, to, to get an understanding of some of the challenges you may face along the way. And so you're able to, um, to prepare yourself for it. Um, I wanted to remind you too of your heart. Your heart is sending you into sorrowful situations and places, but I, I found out from my own experience that there is a reciprocal benefit in those hard places. That joy flows in those spaces. True joy. Joy that is not linked to possession. And when you find persons who are denied a lot of the basics of life, and yet you find them flowing with joy. You ask yourself, what do I pull away from this? And I just want to affirm to you that as you go into the hard places, you will be filled. And you will be receiving. Oftentimes we think of ourselves as going as givers. But go with a mindset to receive because there is greater joy that will come from understanding the work of God 
in the lives of those who in our mindset are unfortunate, right? A, a picture of that is to watch someone who we think is mentally challenged being extremely loving in ways that we ourselves are not able to demonstrate. So go to give and be open to receive. And may God bless you as you go to receive. Thank you so much. And what we're seeing is the way in which we differ. And every presentation will take a different format, but the beauty of who we are becomes evident as we present two beautiful presentations, and I really am happy with this that we've seen so far. Now, Simon, it's your turn. It's actually your day. So go to the screen and then do what you um, need to do by doing your shared screen. Right, we're seeing that now, Simon, go ahead. Simon, we can see your screen, but we are not hearing you. Are you speaking yet? Yes. Okay, sorry. I was looking for the unmute button. Can you hear me now? I can hear you fine. Okay, good. So this this my presentation. Um, I have some of the books I have already reviewed, which I believe will help me as I do my final projects. I have learned a lot from all these books. So many insights. So many revelations, so many challenges from all the books that I've been able to read. And I hope that as I do my final project and I do my writing, I will incorporate some of the insights, some of the revelations and some of the challenges I have received in the reading of these books. For my calling and life vision, I want to give glory to God because of my background. Uh, as I always tell people, I have the privilege to experience Christian nurture. And what I mean by this is that I came from a Christian background. My parents uh, taught me the way of the Lord right from childhood. And I want to thank God for their lives because it has helped me in my own life. And this also could have been responsible or will have so much influence on my calling to ministry at a very young age. Uh, after my high school, I received the call into the gospel ministry. And at a very young age, I went, to, uh, I went for training in the seminary. And uh, the Lord has been helping me since that time. I've been involved so much in many church activities, which has also helped me in understanding God's plan for my life and also helping me to gain experience that when I became a minister of the gospel, it was very easy for me to do the work. How did I receive my, my call? Uh, I had the privilege to hear the message that came from my pastor. And through that message, the Lord spoke to me to call me. Just as people like Isaiah experienced God's call, people like Jeremiah experienced God's call. 
when the call came, I was a little bit confused. I thought I was, I was still too young to respond to God's call. Uh, I, I have not experienced, in quote, what I would call experience the world uh, in terms of um, various, you know, useful exuberances and all of that. So I, I was a little bit confused and it was like, I want to tell God, it is not yet time for me to be called. I'm still young. You should give me some other time. But I received counsel from my pastor, from older Christians. And through that, I was able to respond for God to use me by going for the training. And I've discovered that I have the gift of teaching right from the time I was called. And it has helped me uh, right now in my teaching ministry and also administration. God has also given me wisdom, which I want to believe is a special gift from him, and also counseling that I could counsel people in, in their difficult situations and God's name is being glorified. What is my life vision? I want to be a good teacher, just like the master Jesus, who is regarded as the master teacher, and to also use my gifts to bless my generation. And what are the gifts I'm talking about? The gift of teaching, the gift of administration, the gift of wisdom, and all of that. For communication, uh, I want to give glory to God for the privilege that I have. I have written some articles which have been published in local as well as international journals. And I've also written some chapters in some books that have been published. Uh, these articles and the various chapters are already being used in the academic setting, in the seminary, among our students, uh, as well as uh, people outside, even the seminary. And some pastors are also using some of the insights from these various articles and chapters. But my major goal is that I'll be able to write some books as I look ahead and possibly by the time I'm through with my BJU program, that I will be able to write some books for publication in the areas of leadership and administration. These are my two areas, my two specializations. And that's my concentration, even in my teaching in the school. So I, I will cover uh, more of your prayers that I'll be able to uh, achieve this vision. For my current ministry, well, I, I've mentioned it severally. Um, right now, I'm teaching in the seminary, and I teach students at various levels, from the bachelor level to the PhD level. And uh, God, God has used that ministry to bless this, these students to get them well prepared for the gospel ministry. Our motto as the seminary is make full proof of that ministry. So everything we do, even as we teach, is to get all these students, all these men and women called by God to be well prepared to make full proof of the ministry the Lord has given to them. Apart from teaching, um, I also have the responsibility of serving in administrative capacity. Uh, for now, I'm one of the deputy presidents of the seminary and in charge of administration. And I want to thank God that with the gift of administration, I'm able to do the work without much stress. One major um, venture that is uh, one of the major departments of the school that is under my supervision is the commercial directorate where we have all our businesses, the businesses which one way or the other is equally community service, how we use our various businesses to be a blessing to the community as well as to also raise some funds for the use of the of the school so I, I have the responsibility to oversee whatever is going on 
in that uh, directory. And we want to give thanks to God that we have been trying to achieve the best in that ministry. One major problem there has to do with the attitude of the workers in the directorate. And it, it is it is my my hope that um, with the insights I've gained from this course, as well as the entire BGU program, I'll be able to change their attitude for good so that um, they will know that the work they are doing is unto the law and not just for them to earn the salary. For my relationships, I think I, uh, I'm not doing badly, but I still need to improve. I need to devote more time for my spiritual growth. There's that tendency to get so much engaged in other activities that one will not uh, pay much attention to one's spiritual growth. I've, I've observed that, that my teaching and my administrative responsibilities uh, is taking too much time out of me, that uh, if case not taken, one will just abandon anything that has to do with one's personal spiritual growth. So this one major area, my relationship with God, it should be strengthened. Um, then my relationship with my students and my other colleagues, I think, can also be of great help in my spiritual growth as well as uh, community relationship. So I, I hope that I'll be able to improve on this aspect. Uh, my scope of relationship also, I am more of, of an introvert, so I don't have, I don't have many friends. I have very, very, very few friends, but I want to believe that if I'm able to make some new friends, that can also help me even as I grow spiritually and also as uh, I try to achieve the vision and the goals that the Lord has set for me. Yeah, for my spiritual formation, I mentioned some aspect of it. And to be specific, I think I need to improve on my prayer life. I need to also improve on my reading and meditation from scripture. I also plan to do some more of discipleship and mentoring of younger pastors. Um, by this, I, I will submit myself for discipleship as well as lead others in discipleship and also intensify my effort as a mentor to younger pastors. Uh, I think this, this as, as I do this, I want to believe that it will equally help me to also grow spiritually, to also develop in areas that will make me improve in my task of teaching and of uh, administering the sector that is under my supervision. For my academic plan, um, this course, personal assessment, is, uh, is uh, I think the, the last major course I have to take, because after this, I'll be left to research methodology, then the project writing. And by the grace of God, I've gained a lot when I did the um, organization assessment. And my plan is to assess my organization, the seminary where I am, the Nigerian Baptist Theological Seminary of Boma Shaw. That, that, that's the focus of my project dissertation. And what, what is the aim? It is aimed at helping the MBTS to be of great blessing. We see ourselves as um, an international institution. But the question is, are we truly international in all ramifications? Yes, we have students from various countries in Africa and even outside Africa who are attending the school, who are students in the MBTS. But I know that we still have a lot of things to do, even to make it more international. So the, the 
dissertation will focus on assessing that organization, that is the institution, and see how we can improve, how we can extend even our tentacles to other parts of the world. And I want to believe that this particular course, personal assessment and organizational assessment, will go a long way to help me in doing that which uh, I think God is leading me to do. So briefly, this is my outline, uh, my proposal, and I want to thank you for your kind attention. And I welcome your contributions even to this presentation. Thank you. Thank you too, Simon. Uh, Dr. Hurt, over to you. <clears throat> Hi, Simon. Um, thank you for, for sharing that. I noticed something in your presentation that gave me, that, uh, that was very interesting to me. Um, and, but, but, but I want to ask you a question. Uh, as you were going through your thinking on all this <clears throat> and about your role in, in the seminary, uh, did you consider or was it a point of interest for you that in order to pursue your calling, you might have to step away and become independent? And, you know, maybe start your own business or your own nonprofit? Did that, did, did that, uh, did that thought occur to you? Uh, well, not, not, not really. I've never given thought to that. <clears throat> Good. Yeah. And that's the, that's what I noticed is that you, when you were talking about forming your calling, um, it, it was all in, in the context of, of being within the seminary and, and yes. in your role in the seminary to, uh, to, to execute God's will. And I think that's, that's important for, uh, for all of us to keep in mind is that uh, we don't have to start our own businesses or start our own nonprofits or go off and do something independently, but we can be very effective even if we're you know, within an organization. Uh, as, as part of an organization. Uh, well, when I look at projects uh, over the last few years, um, uh, uh, a lot of students uh, want to, uh, you know, they, they say, well, I'm going to leave uh, my organization and then I'm going to start a nonprofit and they do all these things. That's, that's all well and good, but, uh, but uh, I wanted to point that out because you, you don't have to feel like that you have to leave and do something different in order to pursue your calling. Uh, you're, uh, you know, God's put you there and you can, you can pursue your calling right there and, and, and do those things. So um, that, that was something that, uh, that caught my interest there was, was your, uh, your, your, so your personal assessment in terms of your role um, at the seminary. Thank you. I've, I've actually made up my mind that uh, as long as the Lord permits, I will, I will continue to serve in the seminary until I retire from, from service. So the, over to the rest of the class. Simon, I... Um, I admire your clarity of thought. Um, I think um, I, I could follow clearly where you want to go, um, what you want to do. I, I, I think that is, is commendable. I don't think you've left um, anything to my mind um, to sort out as to where you want to go or what you want to do, and I think that is good. But I'm interested in this, the concept of, the, of a master teacher. How, how do you see yourself serving as, as a master teacher. Sorry, I didn't get that. I said, I, I'm interested in, in, in the concept of a master teacher because I think you said that, you know, that is one of your, um, your objective or, or plan to become a master teacher. And I, I'm asking the question, how, how do you see yourself 
serving in, in, in that capacity and, and who? As a math teacher, sorry, I, I didn't get that very well. You said that you, you want to be a master teacher. You're moving in that direction. And oh, I'm asking, yes. Yes. I'm asking yes. how do you see yourself serving in, in, that, in that context and, and who you, 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 know, you, you hope to serve? Yeah, well, the, the, what, what I have in mind there is to, to focus more and to learn more about Jesus as the master teacher and as much as possible to follow the principles, the concepts, and the, 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 the line that the master teacher, Jesus Christ, followed. Okay. So that I'll be more effective in my teaching ministry. All right. Thank you, Simon. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I just have one question for you, and that is, have you done any exploration as to two things? What is the greatest need? within your organization that you feel called to address this one um and this time um going from the micro <laughs> to the macro um in reverse of the maris because when we find ourselves in located where we are going to serve oftentimes we see from our perspective a need which we sometimes need to align through maybe even scientific methods to the needs of those we're serving. And I specifically say that because when I, I see projects being designed to address the needs of a community, I often find that the community is not represented at the planning table. And because they're not represented, we tend to ask ourselves, how didn't I succeed? But we address their perceived need that we perceived, but did not find out what their thinking and their greatest needs are. And I have seen so much failure of good ideas here in Jamaica because we tend not to bring those we are serving to the planning table. We think they need a house, for example, because they're living in dilapidated conditions. They're not joyous about the house, because what they needed was a farm work ticket to go to greener pastures, to work and come out of their situation. And when we gave them the house, what we did was that we relocated them and cemented their presence at the place they didn't want to be. And it is in that background that I asked you that question. Simon, you seem to be frozen um, a bit. I'm not hearing you. Did you hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. It went off a while ago. Yes, yes. Okay, so you didn't hear the question at all. No, no. I, I didn't hear the question, but I can hear you now. All right, I, I was asking you whether or what is the greatest. Yeah, I was asking you if you have done any analysis of 
the greatest needs of the organization in which you serve? Okay. And if so, how are you planning to address it? Okay. Th thank you. For, for, for now, one of, the, one of the major needs that I have identified is the kind of non-challenge, bad attitude to work. And to address that, um, the, the institution has tried over the years to make use of the theology of work approach by asking members of staff to go through the theology of work. But it's rather unfortunate that uh, even having gone through that theology of work, that, that, that bad attitude, non-challenge attitude is still evident. And I think it, it is giving me some great concern that what can we do so that they will have positive attitude to work, and especially in, in relating with the customers. And talking specifically about our commercial services, as we relate with our clients, as we relate with our customers, we need to demonstrate good attitude to them. So that's the challenge I want to face. And for the community, how do we involve them in the planning? Um, one, one approach I'm already thinking about is to, is to go the empirical approach by the use of questionnaire that they, they will be served, uh, the questionnaire, uh, administer questionnaire on them to get their view about the institution and how the institution can be of blessing, of benefit, even to the community. And I'm talking about the immediate community where the seminary is situated, that's Oboma Shop. So that's, that's the plan for now. But I want to thank you for the insight and the question you have just raised. Thank you, Simon. Um, I'm happy that you are actually thinking about this. And I really am an advocate for involving what we call it the problem in the solution. Yes. That um, to provide a solution that is based on us is very often um, a solution that is not designed for those problems that it's designed for the problems we perceive and it may not be the problem being experienced by the persons to whom we address it. I want you to pay attention, um, all of us, to Angel's writing. Um, he's speaking here, and I think this must be addressed to you, well, um, Damaris on hold. Um, is speaking of the prophetic role and sometimes um, yeah so if you just take some time out to read what Andrew is saying there usually Andrew has some very interesting insights for us and um, I want to just draw all of our attention to it and to continue the dialogue um, Damaris is also speaking to you um, through the chat, um, Simon, I, I am praying for you as you, you dig deep and you lay the foundation within the organization that you feel so called to. Every blessing as you go along. And thank you for a presentation in which you, you're spending some time to think of impact and to think of calling. Uh, we now move to our next presenter. Who would like to present next? All our presentations for today are complete. I still haven't seen Renee joining us. Um, But I, I am in Jamaica, we have a way of saying that um, 
your your head has grown large a way of um speaking to being proud and happy and elated i think this morning as i listen to you i affirm you know god's presence and his work in and through us and i i just want to to pray you all strength as you clarify as you envision as you are guided to deliver a focus that is christ-centered christ-directed and sacrificial to the glory of god i thank you all for the presentation and i'm going to ask dr hurt to close us uh, in prayer as you go uh, but i just want to quickly remind those of us who have not yet set up that plc meeting Marcel, I'm mindful that I have to return a confirmation to you. I've been waiting on Dr. Smith, who has been, um, who has given me an offer to participate. And so I've asked him if your time was one that was available to him. It's been a very useful, very, very useful place of discovery and journey that is not meant to die once the course is over. And I want to free you up also where you may think that the PLC you have on record must be the PLC to join with you. You may discover as you go through the course that you need to make shifts and you need to choose journeying partners that would better um, affirm or you know give you the support you need whether it be um, a spiritual grounded support whether it be an academic support whether it be an encourager so if you have to make that change you are allowed to make it right and the idea is um as much as possible to feel comfortable um, having accountability partners probably but just having that bouncing board um, the voice that speaks back to you in your own certainties and so on those PSC meetings that we've had so far um, I'm sure that the fellow learners within the class have benefited and i would like you to um, respond as soon as possible during the course of this week if you've not yet responded with two or two <coughs> possible times the larger amount of times you respond um, possible times gives us more flexibility all right, so I'm not starting with giving you a time and asking you to get two, three persons to subscribe to that time. I prefer you do your own research, come up with the best times that might be suited for this exercise, and let us see how well we can fit into those. Again, thank you so much um, for this morning's presentation. You have done excellently in your own different ways and i'm sure this recording will assist those who are to present on monday to see just how god is guiding you and how they too can follow the this the script in the way they choose to so, Dr. Ert, your final comments, and then can you close us in prayer, please? Well, th thank you, everyone, for the opportunity to listen to your presentations. Um, the, uh, my, when I make comments, they tend to be more towards the practical, the practicalities of writing your, your project. 
And uh, I wanted to reiterate that uh, use, use this journey to, to narrow your focus on, uh, uh, for your project. Uh, the, uh, what you want to get from is, is the, the broad concern that you have to, uh, to identify a specific problem that, uh, that you will address. And that's not, that's not very easy to do. Uh, because you, it, t it takes a lot of reflection and, and a lot of research to, uh, to, uh, to get to that point uh, so that you can create a, uh, a project that has high impact. And uh, we're all, your, your faculty are always more than happy to, to discuss those things with you as you, as you go through and, and look at, uh, at, the, at the literature and, uh, and, th and think through all these things. Um, so with that in mind, uh, let me uh, close in prayer. <clears throat> Lord, bless these, uh, these students uh, in their projects uh, as they move forward. You, you place something in their hearts that, uh, and, you've, uh, and, and you put experiences uh, in their path that have led them to, to, uh, to, to have a focus. And we ask, Lord, that as they go forward, as they create these projects and then implement them, that uh, yeah, through the PLC encouragement, through the encouragement of, of faculty here at BGU, and, and through their colleagues and uh, and others around them, that you you would give them the the endurance and the resilience to to see these projects through, so that they would have that that impact for you because because although we talk a lot about uh, <clears throat> Uh, you know, one person having only so many resources, only so much time, uh, and and only so much uh, energy. You're the one who multiplies that effort. Um, so we ask that you would take our our little loaves of bread, lo loaves of bread, and our few fishes, and that that uh, that are the projects that we have. And that you would grow them and, and multiply them uh, for global impact. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Hurt, and thank you all for being here. And I look forward to seeing you again on Monday at, at the usual hour, the seven o'clock hour, when you come and listen to the other presentations and um, share them on and we pray each other on every blessing as you write. I want to just make one final reminder that um, we pay specific attention to the standard of writing expected of you at this level, right? So as it relates to grammar, as it relates to spell checks, as it relates to your citation, the APA standards, spend some time to make sure that you're following the standard and familiarize yourself with the template which you have been given the APA template. If, um, most of you have done several classes before, but those who are doing classes not that many times may not have had a response to papers already submitted. Um, pay some attention, get some help if you need to, just so that we have things in the right order. Excellent practice for when you arrive at your dissertation. All right, we don't want to discover that we've been doing it wrong all along at that space. So just a little reminder to all of you, thanks a lot and have a wonderful weekend. For those in the United States, I understand you're having a long weekend. Stay safe, every blessing. Bye.